In the last video, I solved initial value problems by direct integration. I want to do one and only one other technique for solving differential equations. This applies to a particular kind of equation called a separable equation. What is a separable equation? Well, it is a DE with the following properties. The left is the isolated derivative, here dy over dx. For the last video, the right was just a function of x, the independent variable. Now, for a separable equation, the right is the product of two expressions, one in y, the dependent variable, and one in x, the independent variable. So anything that fits this pattern is called a separable equation. How do I solve them? Well, here is the general idea. I can divide both sides by g of y, the expression in the dependent variable y. That moves g of y to the left in the denominator. Then I can integrate both sides in the independent variable x. The right is an ordinary integral, the integral in x of f of x. The left is trickier. However, I can use the substitution rule here. If I think of y as a replacement for x, the substitution y equals y of x is valid. The dy becomes dy over dx times dx, because the derivative of the substitution relates these two. Well, then the right integral becomes an integral in y. And that's what the substitution rule did. It changed the variable. So I've just changed the variable to y, and that means I can do the right integral in y. Sorry, the left integral in y. And finally, I do these two integrals and add a constant of integration. I only need one constant. If there were two constants, I could move them to one side of the equation and combine them into one. This is the pattern for separable equations. The integral of 1 over g in y is equal to the integral of f in x plus a constant. You can just use this pattern. You don't need to repeat all these steps on the slides here when solving. The steps on the slides that I've shown you here are an attempt to convince you that this setup is in fact valid. So let me solve some separable equations with initial values, some separable IVPs. Here is a differential equation. This is separable. The right is sine x times 1 over y. That works. I use the pattern. The left is the integral of the reciprocal of the y piece. So 1 over y becomes just y and the right is the integral of sine x. I do both integrals, y as a reverse power rule to get y squared over 2, and sine from the tables to get negative cosine x plus c. Now the integrals are done, but I don't yet have a function. I have to solve for y as a function of x, since y is the dependent variable here. However, before I do that, I can use the initial condition to determine c. If x equals 0, then y equals 1 according to the initial condition. I put those values in and solve for c. I get 1 half on the left and negative 1 plus c on the right, since cosine of 0 is 1. Adding 1 to both sides lets me conclude that c is 3 halves. That's the value of the constant of integration. So now I put that in for c and try and finish solving for y. To do this, I multiply both sides by 2 and then take a square root. I can simplify a little bit on the inside of the square root by multiplying the 2 into the other terms. Also, I can drop the plus minus that would normally have for the square root. Why can I do this? Well, the initial condition tells me that y is positive, y equals 1. That means that the output of the square root must be positive, so I use the positive square root. This is the solution to the IVP solved as a separable equation. Here is another separable IVP. I go through the steps. On the left, I have the reciprocal of the y expression from the right. The y expression is 1 over y in this, so the reciprocal is just y on the left. I leave the negative with the x on the right, and I integrate both as inverse power rule integrals. I simplify the expressions a bit by multiplying by 2 and moving the x to the left. You might wonder, if I multiply by 2, well, isn't this 2c? Well, since c is a constant that I need to figure out later, I actually don't really care if it's c or 2c here. It's habit, even though it's a bit lazy, to sort of fold multiplications or additions by other constants into c and just write c. Then I use the initial condition. 
Y is 3 when X is 4. Putting those into this lets me conclude that C is 25. So the equation is Y squared plus X squared equals 25. Then I can solve for Y. But before I do that, let me look at this. This is the equation of a circle of radius 5. In this form, I can actually see the geometry nicely. The shape of the circle is the solution to this differential equation, and the radius of 5 matches the initial condition. Sometimes the best intuition about what the solution looks like comes from these intermediate steps before I solve for y. I do still need to solve for y. The circle is not the graph of a function after all. So I move x over and I take the root. Again, I only need the positive root, not the negative root, since I know from the initial conditions that y is positive. The solution to this IVP is y equals the square root of 25 minus x squared. Finally, here is one more example. This one is a little bit deceiving. It doesn't look like a product. The right side is just a function of y. However, I can think of this as multiplied by 1, so the function of x that I need for separable equations is just constant 1. Well, then I moved the, the y part to the left as a reciprocal, 1 over y squared plus 1, and I have 1 left over on the right. Then I integrate both sides. The left is from the tables. After integrating, I solve for y by using tangent to cancel off arctangent. Finally, I put the initial conditions in. Both are 0. I solve for c, which is also 0, and I conclude that this differential equation is solved by y equals tangent of x.